Well, there were fire exchanges at the London Assembly over the way the mayor handled the departure of former Met boss Dame Cresta Dick earlier. A report by Sir Thomas Windsor found Sadiq Khan didn't follow the correct processes, but today the mayor told Assembly members the whole process was flawed and the report ignored the facts. Sir Thomas hit back, saying that was absurd. Our political correspondent Simon Harris was watching. The body language told its own story. There's no love lost between these two men. Sir Tom Windsor is the official who investigated how Sadiq Khan ousted London's police chief, Dame Cressida Dick. He concluded she was treated unfairly, but the mayor doesn't accept his findings. The view of me and others is that uh, the process is flawed, the investigation is biased, ignored many facts. The idea that the facts have been ignored over 115 pages, the facts have been gone into on a minute-by-minute minute detailed basis. They could not have been more painstakingly and thoroughly analysed. Sir Tom said his investigation took 22 weeks instead of six because the mayor failed to engage with him, finally agreeing to just one interview lasting less than two hours. The amount of engagement that I got from the mayor's office and from the mayor was far below what I would have expected on a matter of this seriousness. The Conservative chair of the Police and Crime Committee suggested the mayor was too busy with other activities. I've looked up what you were doing in that time and there was an awful lot of football going on and other concerts, etc. So perhaps you would have had time. Do you regret now that you didn't um, see Sir Thomas earlier? Well, I note the commentary and bias in your question before the question, but, but no. Dame Cressida quit on February the 10th after learning the mayor had lost confidence in her. She and the mayor were due to meet that afternoon, but instead she resigned. Sir Tom said it amounted to constructive dismissal. What is required is giving the commissioner notice in writing of his grounds for seeking her removal, which he didn't do. He did not give the commissioner a hearing. He did not obtain the approval of the Home Secretary. He did none of those things. Sir Tom's wrong. Can I ask you, Mr Mayor, do you think you're responsible for the Commissioner going? Absolutely. Uh, okay. I, I lost confidence in her. Sadiq Khan repeatedly referred to the long list of scandals involving Met police officers, which damaged public confidence in the force and ultimately led to Dame Cressida's downfall. During Sir Tom's yes. time as Chief Inspector, the abduction, rape and murder of Sir Everard, the police and the vigil at Clapham uh, common in the consultation with the local women's groups, the advice given to wave down a bus approved by um, the uh, commissioner. Mr. Mayor. Derogatory comments. I'm well, interested in the answer. The mayor gives no. a long list of things that have happened on my watch. I make the point. They happened on his watch too. This was a tetchy hearing with feisty exchanges. On the question of whether Dame Cressida's removal was handled properly, the mayor and former chief inspector of constabulary fundamentally disagree. Simon Harris, ITV News, City Hall. Good evening. Tax hikes and spending cuts will see millions more Londoners forced to make difficult choices this winter. The Chancellor has made his autumn statement and, as predicted, it includes a raft of measures to get the economy back on track. There was some positive news, benefits and pensions to go up in line with inflation, but not until April. And with inflation still at a 40-year high, the cash in our pockets is worth much less. There was a warning too from local authorities, given the power to raise council tax by up to 5%, that that won't even touch the sides when it comes to covering the cost of services in the capital. And for those previously benefiting from some tax breaks for electric vehicles, well, that's changing too. Our political correspondent Simon Harris reports on what the budget means for Londoners. In the electric car revolution, Londoners have led the way. There are now more than 60,000 battery-powered vehicles on the capital streets. Their drivers don't pay congestion or emissions charges or road tax. But today, the Chancellor called time on one of those benefits. Because the OBR forecast half of all new vehicles will be electric by 2025, to make our motoring tax system fairer, I've decided that from then, electric vehicles will no longer be exempt from vehicle excise duty. Murari bought his electric car two years ago, even though it was more expensive than petrol or diesel. The charging infrastructure in the city and in the country is nowhere near enough where we need to be, so we take a lot of those hits. But these tax benefits, these tax exemptions make up for it. So it's really unfortunate that, uh, and it also doesn't really read well with the UK's commitment on being sort of leading on, on the climate crisis. 
Motoring organisations believe the change was inevitable. It is likely to be a little disappointing for some, but ultimately vehicle excise duty is ring fence for our motorway network and our high speed roads, and those will need to be paid for. So it's probably fair that electric vehicle owners start contributing. In another move, the Chancellor also gave local authorities the green light to bring in steeper council tax rises. Londoners living in a handful of boroughs have the cheapest council taxes in the country, still under £1,000 a year. But in other parts of the capital, the bill for the average bandy home is closer to £2,000. This year, the London boroughs were given permission to increase their council tax bills by a maximum of 3%. Today, the Chancellor lifted the cap, allowing next year's bills to rise by up to 5%. The Labour leader of Westminster isn't impressed. The buck is being passed from central government to local government to deal with the uh, care crisis. Uh, and we're not seeing you know, changes that should have happened today to support the high street, like the creation of an online sales tax, which we've been campaigning for for several years. It's not my intention to raise council tax by anything like as much as 5%. Uh, we're working hard to keep taxes and costs down for local people. Uh, I, I know firsthand that the, the cost of living is a, is a big challenge for a lot of people. You know, I, I grew up on a housing estate in the borough. But like household budgets, council budgets are also being squeezed. And for many Londoners, it seems the days of the £2,000-plus council tax bill could soon become reality. Simon Harris, ITV News.